Joining me this morning is Senator John McCain of Arizona. Senator, thanks so much for being uh, with us this morning. The president says he's reevaluating. He clearly was unhappy with what Bibi Netanyahu said about uh, the Palestinian state during his campaign. Let me play for you something the president said to the Huffington Post. I'm at his word when he said that uh, it wouldn't happen during his uh, prime ministership. And so uh, that's why we've got to evaluate uh, what other uh, options are available to make sure that we don't see uh, a chaotic situation in the region. Senator, are we at a dangerous point here in relations between U.S. and Israel? Well, I think that's up to the President of the United States. Uh, look, there was a free and fair democratic election, uh, the only nation in the region that will have such a thing. The President should get over it. Get over your temper tantrum, Mr. President. It's time that we work together with our Israeli friends and try to stem this tide of ISIS and Iranian uh, movement throughout the region, which is threatening the very fabric of the region. The least of your problems is what Bibi Netanyahu said during an election campaign. Uh, if every politician were held to everything they say in a political campaign, obviously uh, that would uh, be a topic of long discussion. But the point is, his, uh, the JV, as the president uh, described them, is just moving over into Yemen. We see this horrible situation in Libya. We see ISIS everywhere in the world. We see the Iranians uh, now backing the Shia militias in Tikrit, where they're going to where they're going to massacre a number of Sunnis. And it is the the guy in charge is a guy named Soleimani, who uh, who uh, who. Um, imported, excuse me, I'll, I'll catch up here, Soleimani moved thousands of copper-tipped IEDs into Iraq and killed hundreds of American soldiers and Marines, and the President of the United States is praising the mullahs and, the, and their behavior in the region. But, uh, this is one of the more Orwellian situations I have ever observed. Well, but, but you called the president's uh, uh, response to Bibi Netanyahu a temper tantrum. Why is it a temper tantrum if uh, Netanyahu <clears throat> ostensibly rejects during his campaign the very basis for decades of American policy heading towards a, some kind of a, of a peace process? Should the president just sort of pay no attention to that? Oh, I, I think the president may, maybe shouldn't like it. But thousands are being slaughtered by ISIS. They, they, the Iranians have now taken over the major capitals of, of Lebanon, Syria, Beirut, and, uh, and Baghdad. Uh, and it pales in significance to the situation which continues to erode throughout the Middle East, and it puts America at risk. Bibi's rhetoric concerning a election campaign pales in comparison as to the threat, the direct threat to the United States of America of ISIS. This is, the president has his priorities so screwed up that it's unbelievable. Well, well, he's also apparently considering signing a UN resolution calling for a Palestinian state. What would be your reaction if he, if he did that? And should he even be considering that? Of course, he shouldn't be uh, considering it. And second of all, if he does that, then and uh, it, it would be approved by the UN. Then the United States Congress would have to examine our funding for the United Nations. Uh, it, it would be uh, it would be a violation because the president's anger over a statement by BB uh, by the Prime Minister of Israel it would be contradict American policy for. Uh, the last at least uh, 10 presidents of the United States. So you, you think uh, this is something the president in no way, shape, or form should do? Which is more important, Gloria, a statement made by a politician <clears throat> in the heat of a campaign or the wholesale slaughter that is going on throughout the Middle East, the president at the same time is praising uh, the Ayatollahs. At the same time, he has uh, got this idea of this Faustian bargain with the Iranians who are on the march uh, about uh, gonna... a few days ago. Could I just mention a few days ago, David Petraeus said 
that Iran is a greater threat in right. the Middle East I'm than get to ISIS Iran. is. I'm and get I to agree Iran. with him. I want to get to Iran in one sure. moment. One more thing that angers the president about Bibi Netanyahu before we get to Iran is the way he campaigned and said that the Arabs are coming out in droves. And the president told the Huffington Post that this gives ammunition to folks who don't believe in a Jewish state. Uh, do you think that statement by Netanyahu was kind of over the line? I think that politicians make statements. Okay. I know that Israel is our most reliable ally. It is the only place where you will see a campaign where statements are made by one side or the other. You have to put it in the perspective of this incredible threat to uh, the entire Middle East with uh, ISIS on the march, with the Iranians on the march, with thousands of people being slaughtered and killed so, and so young you women think the being... President, uh, you, you think the president is letting his personal feelings toward Netanyahu get in the way of important policy issues? I am convinced of it. Okay. I am convinced of it because either that or he is delusional. I'm not sure which. Okay. Well, let, let me let me get to Iran, uh, which we need to talk about because uh, there is there are nuclear negotiations going on. Some movement over the weekend. Senator Kerry said that. Uh, sorry, Secretary of State Kerry said there has been some progress, as did uh, Iran's president. From what you know about the progress, is this something that you think? is getting towards a deal you might be able to live with? I don't think they'll reach a deal that we can live with because, as Henry Kissinger testified before our committee, we've gone from eliminating uh, Iran's capability to develop a nuclear weapon to delaying it. And that, of course, is unacceptable to, uh, to, most, of, uh, to most of us. And I would imagine it may uh, be enough to uh, have enough votes in the United States Senate to not approve of it. And we will insist on approval and not going to the United Nations. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, this week, I'm sure you know that President Obama himself sent a New Year's message to the Iranian people, which spoke a little bit about this uh, pending deal. Let me, let's take a look at it, and then I'll have you comment at the other side. The weeks ahead will be critical. Our negotiations have made progress, but gaps remain. And there are people in both our countries and beyond who oppose a diplomatic resolution. My message to you, the people of Iran, is that together we have to speak up for the future we seek. What do you think about that message? Was he referring to people like you when he said there are people who oppose a diplomatic resolution? I'm sure he was, and I wish he had spoken to the people of Iran in 2009 when they rose up against a corrupt election and he refused to speak out on their behalf while they were chanting, Obama, Obama, are you with us or, or are you uh, with them? Again, uh, does, any, does he believe that anyone in Iran is able to speak up? Are they able to speak up for anything that the, the mullahs disagree with? They're either jailed or, or killed. I mean, again, this is, this is a, view, a world view the president has, which is totally divorced from reality. Well, let me, uh, some could say that you and, uh, and other senators uh, were interfering, in a way, with the president's negotiations when you were one of 47 senators who signed the letter to Iran's leader saying that Congress needs to approve any deal that Iran enters into. Did you feel in any way, shape, or form before you signed on the dotted line, you've run for president yourself, that this was undermining the commander-in-chief before you even knew what, what he might uh, be thinking of? What, what triggered it, Gloria, was the president's announcement that no matter what Congress voted as far <coughs> as ratification of this agreement, and clearly it's so important, it deserves the, the approval or disapproval of Congress, he, he immediately announced that he would veto any resolution from Congress. That's what triggered the letter and the events Should that Should it took have been place. written Could to the have... mullahs? Yeah. I... Well, well I, I think that it, the mullahs ought to know that Congress will play a role. and. Uh, we will do everything in our power to make sure we do play a role because we think that's our constitutional obligations. I mean, but, but you know, you criticize what Obama did with the video. I mean, isn't what you guys did the same thing as Obama did, trying to, talking to different segments in Iran to a degree? 
Well, we were talking to the, uh, the leaders who are, are hanging people every day who disagree with them, and he was supposedly speaking to people who have a voice in Iran, and they don't. And no human rights observer will tell you that they do. Well, uh, uh, let me change subjects on you for a moment, because you were also sure. in the news this week. We have a uh, fight in the United States Senate over the nomination of Loretta Lynch to be Attorney General. It's in limbo now. It's in <clears throat> procedural limbo. It's now part of an unrelated fight over abortion. And now there's an open brawl, I would have to say, on the Senate floor uh, about whether the delay was racially motivated. Let's take a listen to what your colleague, Democratic Senator Dick Durbin, said and have you talk about it. Loretta Lynch, the first African-American woman nominated to be attorney general, is asked to sit in the back of the bus when it comes to the Senate calendar. That is unfair. It's unjust. Senator, it wasn't just Dick Durbin. The head of the Congressional Black Caucus joined him in saying that this uh, delay was racially motivated. What's your response? My response is that um, you can't erase history. Uh, these same Democrats, led by Senator Durbin, <coughs> filibuster Janice Rogers Brown, first African American to the seat on that court. On that court, they filibustered Miguel Estrada. Uh, this has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do to try and get the legislation through which would prevent or help prevent this horrible issue of, of sexual trafficking that, that is going on. And also, I will add to that, I will not vote for her because she has said she would uphold the president's unconstitutional executive orders uh, concerning immigration. But what did you the, expect the her to say? Senator, that, what did you expect her to say? You know, I, she's a nominee of the president. Yeah, she said that sure. it was reasonable. Yeah. Wouldn't you expect the president's nominee for attorney general to have looked into what the president did and, and then s say it was reasonable? I mean... Well, Gloria, I'm, I'm very quaint and old-fashioned. I expect people to tell the truth when they testify before a, a congressional committee when their nominations are there for congr uh, senatorial approval. <clears throat> I expect her to tell the truth. And well, if the maybe truth she, is that she supports, she right. supports it, then, and she calls them reasonable, then I cannot support her nomination because they are not So why not just have a vote and have it not tied up in all these, this other <clears throat> rigmarole that it's that it's tied up with. Why not just call for a separate vote on the Senate I, floor and have it either stand or fall? I totally agree. And we offered, a, a, Senator Cornyn offered a very reasonable compromise, which I will not, that has to do with shifting the funding to the Appropriations okay, Committee, yeah. and that was turned down. Yeah, that's okay. a little arcane, but it, we've okay. offered compromises. Okay, well, let me, I'm going to have to do one last switch of subjects on you because sure. CNN has confirmed this morning that Senator Ted <clears throat> Cruz, a colleague of yours from Texas, uh, is going to announce his candidacy for the presidency tomorrow morning at Liberty University. Do you think Senator Cruz is somebody who could lead the Republican Party to victory against Hillary Clinton? If the Republican Party uh, nominates him, uh, I do. Uh, he is a valued member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Uh, he and I are, are, are friendly, and I think he is a very viable candidate. That's not an endorsement, though, is it, Senator? No, you know, Lindsey Graham is my, uh, <laughs> is my uh, the one I think that knows best about national security. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Senator McCain. Thanks for being with us from Arizona this morning.